Now you'll say ki yaar, if it's a buy and forget type of a stock for you, why did you book 20 lakhs profit? So let me very, very quickly explain it. And then I will tell you why. Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So let me start today's video by talking about one of the most famous stories in Indian stock investing. This story is of Mr. Rakesh Junjunwala and his investment in Titan. So Mr. Rakesh Junjunwala purchased Titan somewhere in 2003. The price must be around 3-4 rupees. And over his entire lifespan, he continued to hold that stock. So by using this buy and hold strategy, he was able to convert a few lakh rupees into a few hundred crore rupees. And everyone started celebrating that, you know what, this buy and hold strategy is such a genius move that you go identify some good stock, pour in like crazy amount of capital, just continue to hold it and you are going to make crazy amount of money. But let's understand this story in a slightly more nuanced manner by looking at the price history of Titan stock. So I'm opening it up right from 2003 and here you can see that in this zone, the stock corrected by almost 47%. Again, just a few years later, this was around 2004, it again corrected by almost 40-45%. Here again, it almost corrected by 50%. This zone again, this ranges from 2008. Here, the stock corrected by 65%. This zone from November of 2010, all all the way to January of 2014, the stock gave only 3% return. Then again, the stock performed really badly from March of 2015 all the way to December of 2016, 46% wealth erosion in the stock. And very, very recently, it corrected by another 50%. So while all of us believe in the magic of buy and hold, this buy and hold strategy can cause massive panic for a lot of people who are building positions in stocks without understanding the true nature of the stock. So on this video, I'm going to talk about three different type of buy and hold stocks that I have in my portfolio. Why am I holding it? What is my thought process around it? And should you also believe in this buy and hold narrative? I will discuss the entire formula, framework, fundamentals, technicals, macros, everything associated with it. Humble request that please like these type of comprehensively researched videos. Your support in terms of pressing the like button is going to allow these type of videos reach out to more people. So yeah, please press the like button and we will kickstart the video. Also a very quick shout out to our sponsors for today, which is Vested. It is an excellent US stock investing platform. One of the stocks that I'm going to talk about today, which I'm buying and holding is Apple, right? So that's one of the US stocks. So in case you are looking to build more positions and buy stocks like Google, Amazon, Apple, then you could consider using Vested as an investment platform. So you can check more details in the description and comment box. One very quick point regarding US stock investing that a new TCS rule, tax collected at source rule has been applied and whatever stocks you are buying before October, that will not fall in the purview of this TCS. But after that, if you're doing US stock investing, it would fall under the TCS purview. So please understand this rule. I have explained it in the attached Google documents. So please go and read it. And you can use the links in the description and comment box in case you want to learn how to do US stock investing. So, okay. So let me first and foremost explain the framework of buy and hold. And then I will start discussing three of my favorites, buy and hold stocks. So essentially, if you're looking for buy and hold stocks, then it should meet all these four conditions. The first condition is that the company should be an undisputed market leader. When I say undisputed market leader, it means ki koi aspas bhi nahi hai. there is like no number two, number three in that category. This is a type of a stock in its own category. For example, one of my buy and hold that I'm going to explain is Apple computers. Now, Apple is a very, very different from Google. Google is a very, very different from Amazon. And Apple is in a league of its own. The amount of cash that it sits on, the fan following that Apple computer has, it is like absolutely crazy. So that company is in its league of its own. So that is the meaning of undisputed market leader. Second key thing is that there should be no red flags. Now, what is the meaning of red flag? It means that you know, the founders are always in the news. Ki kuch na kuch chalta hai, you know, this report nikal gai, wo report nikal gai, right? So that should not be there. Debt, very, very heavy debt company. None of the companies that I'm going to speak about are very heavy debt oriented companies. A sign of a great company or a buy and forget type of a company is that it has the ability to consistently generate at least 15 to 20% compounded profit every single year. It is said, and I think that Mr. Peter Lynch gave this quote that see, if a company is consistently generating, let's say 20% profit margin year on year, year on year, and Apple agree that you know what, the stock price is not moving, it is still moving sideways. At some point, this 
rise in profits is going to catch up with the stock price for example today when i'm shooting this video bajaj finance today gave a run up of almost 8% 3 4 days back something like hdfc amc gave a run up of 12% something like nam india gave like 16% run up so when stocks start to run this is called as catching up there will be a phase when the stock is not moving much despite generating profits but please note that a company that consistently generates profits one day or the other give it like 2 3 year time span it will definitely reflect into the stock price this is a very very important point third key thing is that that company should have a massive tam tam means total addressable market for example what is the total addressable market of apple computers well when it comes to iphones it's like you know all the top 5% rich people in the world or top maybe like 10% rich people in the world then they will come with product number 2 for example airpods it could be top 20 25% rich people in the world so if you start categorizing their products it is designed in such a way that it would address a big population on earth right so that is the total addressable market size of the company fourth and finally and this is a point that most people miss that you can buy a great company but if you are buying that company at crazy valuations the chances are that you are not going to make good money on it that's part a part b that if you are buying a company at very rich valuation and if a correction comes then you might not have the stomach to hold that stock any longer so please note this point very very important that whenever you are buying a company it should happen ki aapko at least short ya mid term mein it gives you a little bit of push and you are able to book a little bit of profit so that allows you to build confidence build cushion in the market that aage chal ke going forward if something wrong happens with the stock at least 10-15% correction हुआ तो you are able to hold it. So that is the basic point and these four points should stick with you that whenever you are trying to pick a buy and hold, buy and forget type of a stock, it should definitely meet all of these four conditions. Now with that out of the way, let me explain the three stocks that I am going to speak about, which are my buy and hold. I have invested a lot of money across all of these three stocks. I am sitting already on a lot of profits on all of these three stocks. Is it a good time to buy these? Not buy these? you will understand please listen to the next phase of this video so the first buy and forget type of stock right now for me is hdfc bank now this is my total investment on hdfc bank it is close to a 1 cr on top of that i am sitting on a 20% unrealized profit on hdfc bank on top of that i have at least book 20 lakhs worth of profit on hdfc bank already now you'll say ki yaar if you it's a buy and forget type of a stock for you why did you book 20 lakhs profit so let me very very quickly explain it and then i will tell you why hdfc bank is a buy and forget type of a stock for me now okay so let me very quickly explain you the back story that for the last one year i have been aggregating hdfc bank and people who have been following me on youtube you guys already know this now why did i book 20 lakhs of profit on hdfc bank well very simple that this is a profit that i already have this gives me at least a 20% correction cushion because ab aise maan ke chalo that if i am already sitting on 20 lakh profit and if for example tomorrow something bad happens with hdfc bank and it falls then i at least will be able to stomach that 20 lakh worth of notional loss so notional loss is the loss that is reflecting on your account but you haven't booked it for example right now you can see that i am sitting on roughly 20 lakhs of unrealized profits so these are notional profits these are something that i haven't booked but an interesting question for you that right now how much hdfc bank needs to fall by in order for me to evaporate all my profits well it will at least need to fall by 30 40% in order for me to evaporate my 20 lakhs of unrealized profits also and the profits that i have already booked therefore i always propose profit booking why because it gives you actual confidence to stay put in the market now this money that i have invested in hdfc bank ab kuch bhi hota rahe isme right i mean it is very very unlikely that that hdfc bank is going to fall roughly by 40% from this point and for me i can continue to hold this stock for years and years i will not worry about its short term movement very similar to how rakesh janjanwala ji did not probably worried about titan and all that stuff so for me it becomes a buy and forget now you might have a second question ki yaar rakesh janjanwala ji he purchased titan when it was a very small company you are buying hdfc bank when it is already a very big company so how will you make money and generate exact same returns as mr rakesh janjanwala ji did my goal is not to beat mr rakesh janjanwala's investing style or generate like 50% kagar a year i am very happy generating like 20% kagar a year and my strategy allows me to do it i share all this information i share macros my micros i talk about profit booking 
strategizing share strategies on my member community tab so in case you want to learn more please consider joining it especially if you are a serious investor now let me very briefly talk about what i see as the growth prospects of hdfc bank so point number one let me very quickly run you through that framework so what was the first point that i spoke about that the company should be a market leader is hdfc bank a market leader 100 percent yes it is by far the market leader when it comes to private banks as of now so this is point one i will not belabor this second key point is there any major red flag on hdfc bank the short answer is no there is no major red flag as a quick upload many better at the hdfc bank yes something similar to icici bank can happen someday i don't know i cannot take guarantee of that but net net we can all agree to the fact that it is a very clean company third key point that does the company have a massive tam which is total addressable market the answer is 100 percent yes now where will that tam come from well it would come in the form of credit card debit card penetration in india which is still fairly low it will come in the form of bnpl right the loan giving loan taking all that stuff it will definitely happen third and finally with the growth of middle class in india more and more people are going to use banking products more extensively so the term for something like hdfc bank and banking sector in general is very very strong in india now comes the fourth and very interesting point regarding hdfc bank which has to do with macro trends so let me explain a few critical macro trends that are going on on hdfc bank as of now so the first key thing that i will show you here is the m1 money supply and why am i showing you and what is the meaning of m1 money supply see we don't need to become economist m1 money supply simply means that this is the total liquid money that is flowing in the economy what you would notice and please notice here right this is 2020 and we were sitting on this 40000 unit of money now how much is it it is close to 60000 what has been the growth so if you subtract 60 minus 40 20 20 by 40 is a 50% growth in money so there is 50% more money in india as of now the total money supply in the world has gone up like crazy therefore inflation also has gone up like crazy no doubt about that now why am i telling you all this economics very simple so think about it that when do banks make profit and how do they make profit very simple that on one hand they borrow money and on the other hand they give out loans and whatever is left in the middle is the spread or the amount of commissions that they make and that becomes banks profit so with that viewpoint in mind that if there is more money flowing around in the economy who is going to get richer it is the banks that are going to get richer and therefore almost 40 to 60 percent of my money is in bfsi banking financial services and insurance that is a sector that i'm heavily betting on and i'm quite confident that this sector is likely to grow it is not even like touched anything as of now even something like hdfc bank can almost become 3x in the next five years that is my estimate of course i can be wrong but let me add further viewpoints on this and talk about some other interesting trends second point you would have already heard about the merger that is happening for hdfc bank and all this so i'm not going to speak much about it but that is actually a positive thing previously i have already spoken about the hdfc bank merger so net net it is a positive thing it will help hdfc group to reduce its cost now the point that people miss about hdfc bank is is its stock price movement right now it is at a very good entry point according to me and i've already built a lot of position on it and would continue to build more positions on it so let me explain why that is the case so if you consider the long term trend and long term channel for hdfc bank and here we are looking at the data from 2017 onwards so this is the channel that can be easily drawn now this channel was broken number one due to covid and number two here when the stock market overall started to correct quite aggressively and since then it has recovered quite a bit but if you consider that this point right so this so let us call this as point a you will realize that this has been almost how much so two and a half years have happened and hdfc bank has given zero percent return now related to the fundamentals of the stock to what extent has the profits and revenues for hdfc bank has grown number one and number two i showed you that m1 money supply chart Think about it that going forward, are the revenues going to increase even if HDFC bank does not improve its performance? The short answer to question number two is yes, 100%. It will happen because there is just more money floating around. Who is going to give out that money in the economy? Those would be the commercial banks. So if you consider the revenues, you will clearly see that the revenues have doubled over the last five years. What about profits? Profits have become almost 2.5 times in the last five years. Now, please relate this information to the M1 money supply. So this number of 170, 754, 
do you think that by 2028 in the next five year this would definitely not become 350000 ke aas pass it will most likely become that simply because of the fact there is still excess liquidity in the market there is a lot of money that has been printed and it will go through banks interestingly note another number that here the revenues doubled but the profits 2.5x so if the number goes from 170 to 350 how much would the profits go by right here you will say yeah you double you i but here the profits will at least go 4x that is the basic understanding in finance that finance is highly leveraged so i hope that all these reading between the lines you are able to understand now let me finally talk about why the stock price is going to go up well here is the answer for that and the answer is that fii's are going to buy something like hdfc bank quite aggressively where am i getting that idea from so let me show you the fii data first and foremost and then i will speak a little bit more about it so here is the cdsl data on fii buying year wise right and if you just scroll through this you will start seeing some very interesting trends what you will first and foremost notice is that in 2020 fii's were net buyers right so they bought a lot of stuff here then they sold then they sold again and in 2023 the ongoing year they are still buying right so this is a very important point now the second data point that you need to understand about fii is that if you aggregate these two numbers how much does this come out to it comes out to be roughly 1.6 lakh crores right and how much has the total buying happened so far it is 1.3 lakh crore now you'll say ki yeah, there is only a deficit of 30k right or something around that no again go back to that m1 money thing that i have spoken about when it comes to us unne to aur bhi zyada printing kari hui hai so all that money is going to flow somewhere some part of it is definitely going to come to india so do you think that when it comes to fii buying they are only going to buy like 30k worth of stocks now the short answer is no they are going to at least buy 2.5 lakh worth of crore more from this point so if they are going to buy 2.5 lakh crore worth of stocks what type of indian stocks they are going to buy well first and foremost they are going to buy something called as fno oriented stocks why because big fii's when they buy they hedge their positions and for that they if they are buying some asset in the cash market so all of us retail investors we buy in the cash market whenever we are going and holding a stock that is a cash market position but they also hedge their positions in the futures market so there are a handful of fno oriented stocks in india hdfc bank is one such stock that's part a part b is that when fii is buy aisa nahi hota ki they only buy for like you know 5 crore ka khareed lete hain that's it no when they start buying they start buying for like you know 7700 1000 1000 crore in a day right so that is like absolute crazy number to put on any stock and therefore the stock starts to give massive rise and that is something that happened on bajaj finance also so the data is not out yet i am making this video during market hours but i am quite confident that a lot of fii buying would have happened in bajaj finance as of today so i hope that this point is clear that hdfc bank is a market leader no red flags still in a very good position to buy given the performance of the stock given the macro trends on the stock and given the fact that fii's are deliberately going to pick these type of stocks going forward because they are left with a lot of money to be invested in the indian stock market so this is my first buy and hold type of stock when i say buy and hold a stock becomes buy and hold or buy and forget only when i have booked 20 30% profit on that of my entire capital and i am in a position ki yaar 10 20% gir bhi jaye koi fark nahi padta right so that is when a stock becomes buy and forget for me so hdfc bank was one such stock second stock that is buy and forget for me is the apple stock or apple computers so if i show you apple stock you will see that you know what this is like an all time high so why are you proposing this stock part a that i have already purchased a lot of apple stocks many of my students community members will all comment that you know what for the last 8 months i had been buying apple in extensive amount when it was trading at somewhat of a discount lot of us stock profit booking i have already done so my one big position on apple has already been built so this is point 1 point 2 is that right now right if we again run apple through that framework that i had spoken earlier that is the tam for apple big yes is it a market leader the answer is yes does it have any red flags the answer is no it does not have any red flags as of now it is sitting on massive cash positions fourth and finally that are the macro trends supporting apple the short answer is brilliantly yes this is a point that people do not understand about apple computers right now again i will say something that might ruffle a few feathers but according to me apple despite its massive market cap as of now it is close to 3 trillion dollars it can still double 
okay now why can it double that's the important question see the thing is that for this you need to understand the ai story as to how it is getting shaped probably i will do a separate video on what artificial intelligence good stocks are what the technology is about if you study the technology it has two parts one is the r and d part a lot of companies are running in terms of r and d nvidia stock has grown like crazy but the second aspect of it is that once the r and d is done and consumer applications need to be built Apple computer has that consumer orientation. It is doing a lot of amazing things in the AI space and AI is an industry that is going to be massively popular in the next 5-10 years. It is going to corner a lot of businesses and Apple seems to be doing fairly well on that consumer front. So what precisely is it doing? So basically it is doing something called as generative AI. So you might have recently read the news that it has come out with an AR headset and it is going to be a game changer in the industry. I don't know about that, right? But it is a consumer facing product. That's the first key point. Second, Apple has introduced a basic app called as journal. And what it does is that it kind of proves that Apple is good at commercializing generative AI. So let me very quickly explain what generative AI is. Probably it will take me a video to explain it, but I'll be very quick here. So for the sake of simplicity, some things might be off, but generative AI in very simple understanding means, let's see, as humans, we can do some really complicated stuff. For example, make, we can make excellent paintings, right? And therefore we know people like Leonardo da Vinci or Van Gogh, etc., because their paintings are very intricate. Can machines make paintings like Leonardo da Vinci? Short answer as of now is no. Can machines create music like Mozart or Ed Sheeran? Bacha probably, but other two I highly doubt it. So please Bacha fan do not get triggered. I'm just explaining you. So to cut the long story short, generative AI is able to do highly complicated stuff that humans are able to do. Now artificial intelligence is basically machine brain, right? You, that you feed a lot of data to it. It understands, it develops its own intellect. And through that, it keeps on iterating, iterating, iterating. And at one point in time, it becomes a highly capable machine of doing complicated stuff. So that is what generative AI is. The game that Apple is playing right now is that it will be able to commercialize that generative AI. This is a point that will take me some time to explain, but I hope that you are able to somewhat get this point that Apple is very good at commercialization of this generative AI. And therefore, Apple as a company is a game changer. I know that this might have gotten a little bit complicated because the topic itself is a little bit convoluted. So maybe I will present this topic in more detail on my next video. But I hope that you understand that right now, when you are betting on Apple, you are not betting on iPhones. That iPhone 16, 18, 20, no. You are betting on the fact that Apple is going to be a game changer in this commercialization of generative AI. So you can already see that Apple is advertising massive number of jobs in this generative AI. All these are moving pieces, right? That can be automated by using generative AI. How exactly? Probably I'll speak about it on some other video. But what I'm trying to simply tell you is that right now, Apple is actually building components. It is building a bank. It is building an insurance company. It is building hardware, which is already good at. It has massive power in software. And more importantly, it ties all of this together with the concept of luxury. Luxury is a very important concept because it creates an aspiration. Everyone wants to own an Apple product. No one wants to own like a Dell product, right? Have you ever seen anyone going to a cafe and flipping like their Dell laptop and, you know, showing their like Redmi phone? The answer is no. Why? Because it does not have that luxury feel to it. Apple products have that luxury feel to it. When someone owns an Apple product, it gives them a kick. That is something that they can put together. Therefore, they are going to be a market leader when it comes to commercialization of generative AI. This is a point that people are not seeing as of now. I am completely okay taking the bet because I was able to aggregate a lot of Apple stock when it was somewhat discounted. Now one could argue that it is at its all time high. The company kitri double ujayegi from this point. I think that the company can actually corner a lot of market in this new age segment. So therefore I'm betting on it. I'm buying even more of Apple, even at this valuation. Probably I can afford to do it because I've already built my base. If you're new to Apple, then please do it in SIP format. It's buy and forget from an SIP format. Not as if you have invested as of now. Definitely valuation is a concern for Apple, but it's because of the AI game that the valuations are extremely rich for Apple as of now. I wanted to discuss my third buy and forget stock, but the video will become very long. My third buy and forget stock was Hindustan Unilever. I will write a community post on it tomorrow. I still feel that it is at a good buying level. I will explain my investment thesis on it. Meanwhile, you can consider watching this Hindi video that I had done where I had discussed 
three very good stock buying option as of now which are undervalued these might not be buy and forget but these are definitely undervalued stocks so you can go and check it out thank you so much for watching and i will see you soon